Hello everyone, welcome back. So this is video number 23 in this playlist where I'm using RStudio, the R programming language, to do some basic data science tasks and analyses. So in the previous couple of videos, I did some stuff around descriptive statistics and measures of center, measures of spread. And I thought in this video and the next few, I'll move on to do some more inferential statistical tests. Um, so this one, what I'm going to focus on is correlation analysis. So you use correlations to assess the association between two scale, scale variables and the data set that I'm going to use uh, for this particular uh, analysis is it's a data set around exam anxiety and revision, time spent revising exa exam anxiety um, that is available from Andy Fields discovering the statistics series. I can't remember if it's from the his SPSS or his R video, but that's the data set I'm going to use. I've got it if I look at files for this particular project I, uh, I'm using here. I've got it saved here as examanxiety.csv, so I've got it saved as a CSV file on in the folder that I'm working in, the kind of uh, working directory I've got this project pointed to. Okay, so a couple of things before we start. I'm going to use a couple of uh, packages I've not kind of used or demonstrated, I think, in the previous videos. I'm going to use a package called coreplot to, to plot correlations, make nice visualizations of them. Uh, I'm going to use the tidyverse, uh, as I often do. I'm going to use a package called magrita for pipes. Uh, and if you don't have these packages, you'd have to install them using install.packages, core plot, and then and then uh, import them using the library function. So uh, launch them using the library function. So I've already got them installed. So I'm just going to comment out these these commands because I don't want to run them. So this library and then let me comment one of those again. So library and then the name of the package is, is kind of the the basic, the common way that I have demonstrated how to uh, how to launch packages that are already installed uh, within your package manager, essentially. Um, I, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of other ways to do that. So um, I don't, I'm not sure if I've demonstrated this syntax before, but what I'm doing here is using an if statement and I'm using this exclamation point, which would be a negation, essentially, in programming, uh, if and then not require and then the package name pacman. So I'm looking for a package called pacman uh, and then install.packages pacman. So what that command there in line 14 is doing is saying um, if if I if you if I don't have pacman installed, install it essentially. And the same with a package called Rio as well. I'm not going to run either of these two commands either because I've I do have those packages installed, but it's kind of a, an inter a useful way in one line of syntax here to say, um, have a look to see if we've got the package Rio installed. If not, then um, install that package, essentially. So once I've done that, I can then use Pacman, uh, which is useful for loading packages. That's the kind of package manager, I think is what the, uh, the package name is short for. And I'm going to use this syntax, I'm going to say Pacman, and then I've got uh, colon and then another colon and then I've got this p underscore and Pacman's got a series of functions you can use p underscore and then the name of whatever it does in this case p underscore large would be package load and then I'm <coughs> in parentheses I'm specifying the names of the installed packages that I want to import I want to load essentially uh, so I'm saying I want to load core plot magrita I have to, although I'm using Pac-Man to do this, I have to also launch Pac-Man, Rio and Tidyverse. So if I if I do that in kind of one command, what I've done is essentially loaded a, a load of packages. So I wouldn't have to do, you know, like four different lines here of library, Tidyverse, library, Magrita, things like that. It's a pretty useful command and just another way to do, so, do some things within R. So they, what I'm going to do now is... Um, I'm going to import that data set that I mentioned previously, that examanxiety.csv data set. I'm going to use that. I'm going to save it as an object, df. I'm going to assign it to the name df for data frame. I'm going to use the read.csv command. 
and then examines a .csv, that's the actual name of it, what it's saved as, uh, in, in double quotes, so it has a string, essentially. So if I run that command, you can see in the environment here, we've now got an object called df, which is a data frame, 103 observations of five variables. So let's look at what those five variables are using the head command. And you can see we've got, what we've got is we've got a code variable, which is just a list of, of numbers. This is basically just an index variable. So it's just an index number for each participant, one, two, I'm assuming 103. And then we've got uh, a variable called revise. This is the number of hours someone spent revising. Uh, a variable called exam. This is their score on an exam. A variable called anxiety. This is an anxiety score for them. So higher numbers in this case, I believe, are higher anxiety. And then we've got this categorical variable called sex. Uh, and it's dummy coded as one and two, male and female. Can't remember which way, way around that is. But if we use the glimpse function, we can look at the data types. And it tells us here, code's an integer, revise's an integer, exam's an integer, anxiety's double. And sex has been, um, it's been interpreted by R as an integer, although it is a dummy coded categorical variable. So not all of um, the variables in this data set are gonna be useful to us when we're, we're, when we're using a correlation, we're correlating two scale variables to see how much scores on one change as scores on the other change. Okay, so, but what I will do to start off with, kind of just to demonstrate this is, uh, I will just correlate this entire matrix. So I'll give, return a correlation. I'm gonna do DF and then I'm using the pipe. I'm piping the data frame into the core function, COR function, correlation function, which is part of the base R package. So let me run that and you can see what it's done is create this correlation matrix. You can see uh, it's included code and sex. So, um, these values for the correlation between sex and these other uh, other variables, they're not really integers, so they're going to be meaningless. And the same with code; these are just the they just the running index, a number for each participant, so we could identify them. And obviously, if you've seen a correlation matrix before, you know that the the diagonal elements are all going to be one because that's the correlation between a variable and itself. So revise and revises has a, a perfect correlation with itself. Yeah, but those are also kind of uh, meaningless information. The correlations above that diagonal where it's all one and below it are exactly the same thing. So it mirrors the correlation coefficients and duplicates that information across the diagonal. Okay, so um, this is to eight decimal places uh, by default here. So it's kind of, that's quite precise, but it's also difficult to look at. So we could, what we could do is pipe that again into the round function. So what I'm gonna do is go DF, then correlate and then pipe. And I'm gonna say round it to two decimal places. That's a bit easier to look at. We still have problems with this data though, in that we've got variables included that are, kind of uh, we don't really want we can't really correlate so participant id in index variable it doesn't correlate meaningfully with exam score anxiety or anything like that because it doesn't mean anything it's an arbitrary number assigned to the participant um and also sex it's shown as an integer as i said before but it's actually a, it's actually a categorical variable so it's not identified the correct data type however we can select we can select the variables we are interested in um, by just using the select function to take a slice from this variable to this variable. So if they're contiguous variables, that's useful. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna just select revise, exam, and anxiety, those three variables. I'm saying, I'm taking the data frame, I'm piping it into the select function, I'm saying go from um, revise, then colon, anxiety. So I want the columns from revise to anxiety, and then I'm piping that again into the core function to get the correlation, and we'll round it to two decimal places. Notice this, the order of the syntax matters here. I had to select the columns I want before I've correlated it and then rounded the output. If I'd put select at the end, it would not have worked properly. And now you can see we've got three meaningful scale variables correlated with each other. And we've got some interesting patterns here. We've got revise and exam. We've got a correlation of 0.4. Uh, 
uh, revise an anxiety, we've got a negative correlation of negative 0.71, so a very strong negative correlation. So our scores on one are increasing, scores on the other are decreasing. So I see it as our scores on revision are increasing, anxiety scores are decreasing. And then we've got exam and anxiety as well. That's a quite a, a kind of moderate to strong uh, negative correlation also. So suggesting as, as exam scores are increasing, anxiety scores are decreasing. OK, so that's useful. It's interesting to see, but it'd be good to visualize this. So we're going to use core plot to visualize that, that new package we imported there. And uh, I'm going to do similar bit of syntax. We're going to take our data frame, pipe it into the select function, just select the root columns from revised to anxiety, and then pipe it into the core function to get our correlation matrix. And then we're going to pipe it into core plot. And we're going to specify a, a number of angle, uh, arguments. Type is what type of matrix we want. We could have the full matrix where it duplicates everything above and below the diagonal. Uh, just the upper section of the, ma of the matrix or just the lower section of the matrix, the lower part uh, below the diagonal. Uh, so I've set specified type as upper as a string in parentheses. So we'll get the upper part. The, we, we, rather than having duplicated information, we'll just have the coefficients presented once. And then diag equals F. So I'm setting that to false to remove the diagonal. So I don't want it to show us the correlations for those that are shown as ones where each variable correlates with itself. Uh, order is the, I've specified the original, so that's just the order for the labels to show it in the same order as the labels appear in the data set. And then I've set, specified the font color to be black. And the, if you use this tl.srt equals 45, just to, to put the labels along the uh, horizontal on the top at a 45 degree angle. Let's, let me run this and we'll get a better idea of what that looks like. And you can see here in, we've got our plot up here down here. If I zoom on it, it'll present it. That looks even better. So what we've got now here is a very nice. Notice that um, the first, the, the first variable has been dropped from the top, uh, from the columns. And the last one um, is, is anxiety has been dropped from the rows because we only need to we only need to correlate them one time with each other uh, and you can see there that's presented we can see that dark red and um, that is indicative of a strong negative correlation remember that was about 0. negative 0. 0.7 the correlation between revise and anxiety so you can see the color scale here shows as it goes from uh, like a dark red negative negative one up to a dark blue of one so that's 0.44, I believe, was the correlation between revise and anxiety. And that was kind of like a about here, say, uh, a fairly strong uh, positive correlation. OK, so that's a really useful plot using core plot that you could use in a report of some type. And right, the last thing I'm going to do now is just kind of demonstrate how to obtain. Um, so we've got our correlation coefficients. We've got a visualization of them that's useful. Perhaps we actually want a bit more information than that. So often what you want with a correlation is you want to know the direction of it, the strength of it, and also whether that correlation is, is significant, by which we would mean if uh, if we have a null hypothesis that the, the correlation between our two variables is zero, the alternative would be that it's different from zero. And if it's significant, we, we can assume this there's some support for the suggestion, the idea, the hypothesis that the correlation is different uh, from zero, the uh, strength of the correlation. OK, so we can obtain all that stuff from Pearson's R um, using core.test. So to get details on a specific correlation, we could use core.test and um, Note here, so the, the syntax is, I'm taking my data frame and I'm piping it again, but note here that 
my pipe operator is different to the one we've used previously. I'm using that dollar sign, which is we often use when we're selecting certain variables from the data frame. So this is our normal pipe operator. Where we've got the arrow, uh, but this pipe operator is called the exposition pipe. So we're taking it's uh, percent sign, dollar sign, percent sign. And then so I'm taking the DF, piping it into core.test, and then within the test function, I'm specifying which of the variables I, I want to correlate, revise an anxiety in this first case. So what that exposition pipe is doing essentially is it's taking our data frame and it's stripping away um, most of the, uh, the other variables that we're not interested in and just returning vectors for the two variables we are interested in. So let me run that and you can see the output below here. It tells us, let me make the output bigger so we can see it. Uh, so it's closer to the middle of the screen at least. So you can see it tells us it's used Pearson's product moment correlation, often used uh, referred to as R, uh, as the coefficient. Um, the, it, it's correlating revise and anxiety, and it's given us the the um, output for a statistical test, a significance test. It's given us a t-value, negative 10.11. It's given us some degrees of freedom for that test and the p-value of p is less than 2.2 times e to the negative 16. So that's a very, very small number. So that would require you to move that decimal point to the left 16 places. So it'd be 0 0.0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, etc. Okay, so um, that would be a highly significant um, test, essentially. And it tells us below the alternative hypothesis is that the true correlation is not equal to zero. So remember the p-value, p this, this type of frequent this significance test is, it's kind of, um, it's an inverse measure of, the, of the, the weight of support for the null hypothesis. So the smaller that p-value is, uh, the more support there is for the possible alternative hypothesis. And in this case, that the true correlation is not equal to zero. So we seem to be uh, seem to be finding here that there, there we the correlation is significantly different from zero. Okay, it gives us ninety five percent confidence intervals uh, from negative zero point seven nine to negative zero point five nine. And the last bit it gives us is the actual R value, which we saw previously. It's about negative zero point seven one if we round that to two places. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's quite interesting. A lot of useful information. It kind of supports, it's given us a, t a significance test along with our correlation coefficient and degrees of freedom. So it's given us some useful information that confirms that, you know, this, this strong negative correlation is probably statistically significant. It does, a, it is an association that exists. Uh, let's do the same thing with exam and anxiety. Okay, so uh, gives us the same output. We, this time we've got smaller t value, negative 4.94. P is still significant though, and we stated the alternative hypothesis for us again, and we can see our correlation coefficient is negative 0.44, um, as we knew it was. So what was that? Exam and anxiety, that's kind of this one. It's negative. Um, this sort of orangey colour here. All right, so that's it. That's kind of uh, what we've looked at today. We've looked at alternative ways to import data and load packages, um, how to easily correlate the data, the variables in your data frame, but some of the dangers of doing that without uh, inspecting the data types can give you meaningless results, such as it's kind of interpreting the data type wrong. In our case, it was suggesting a categorical variable and an index variable were kind of integer scale variables when they weren't how to select the variables you want, uh, how to create nice nice correlation visualizations using core plots, and also how to just conduct those inferential statistical tests um, to assess the significance of the correlation. Right, that is it from me. I'm gonna stop talking now. Hopefully this was useful. Um, a bit off schedule at the moment due to, due to some recent events happening. Um, but I will try to record some more of these and publish them um, at regular intervals. Hope this was useful. Uh, thanks for watching and listening and I will speak to you soon.